This episode, I chat with the musical maestro. I get smart with CBBC's Kirsten O'Brien. We listen to the voice of the Podsterons. Chris Dale hits a purple patch with the randomizer. And the podcast has a right royal time in London. All coming up on Pod 55 of the Jerry Anderson Podcast. Hello, I'm the Doctor, and you're listening to the Jerry Anderson Podcast. And on Z! Let's get started. Let's go. Spectrum is green. The Jerry Anderson Podcast with Jamie Anderson and Richard James. <laughs> ah, here we are again. <laughs> Don't sound so surprised. You just recorded the thing we just said. Oh, yeah. No, well, it's called acting, Jamie. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. Very good. I was going to see, see how convincing it was. Anyway, yeah, yeah. this is the Jerry Anderson Podcast. Yeah. I'm Jamie Anderson, and you are... Well, I'm still Richard James. Always have been and always will be. And good. welcome to Jerry Anderson Podcast. We're here for the next hour and a bit or so, uh, talking all <laughs> things uh, Jerry Anderson. Uh, what, what have we got to look forward to, Jamie? Uh, well, all the usual stuff, obviously. Yeah. Uh, what well, was is that sort of news and yeah. uh, voice of the podstrons yeah. and all the stuff we talked about in the coming this episode yeah, but there, thing? But there's something we missed out, Jamie. That quite surprises me that we didn't even mention it in the this episode preview. Uh, is it Fab Facts? Yeah. How could you forget that? Well, I, I never do, but I'm so used to you saying it's rubbish. That, <laughs> uh, but in fact, now you've got your Fab Facts book. Have you got your Fab Facts book there? I, I don't have it to hand. I could go and get it. It's just No, don't worry. I, we can use mine, but we'll use yours next time. But also, we need to talk, Jamie. Well, do we, we do. need. We do. I mean, we, it's all very well have a, having a new, shiny, you know, exciting intro, this episode preview type thing. Yeah. But we're missing something, aren't we? Are we? We're sorely missing something now, and I feel I should add it here. Okay. It's the Jerry Anderson Podcast! There, probably for the last time. Yeah, well, I mean, you still could do that in the this, coming this episode thing, can well, you? Well, I don't know. I quite like the I, new format. Let's see how we go. We can experiment. Let's see how we go. We're mixing it up. That's all we're doing. Yeah. Anyway, and the, the interview, we've hinted at it in, in uh, the intro. Mm. Uh, well, uh, can I just give you a few more hints? I mean, go- it's already in the episode yeah. title, but in case you're not sure yeah. what that name means. Mm. Well, the interview this week is with the man behind this. And this. And of course, this. The Jerry Anderson Podcast with Jamie Anderson and Richard James. Ah, it's Nicholas Briggs again, part two. <laughs> Great. No, so okay. as you all will know, uh, the podcast theme and all those other bits and pieces were all composed by the wonderful Benji Clifford. Yes, great. Composer, general musical maestro, uh, retro nostalgian. Yeah, oh, very so, nice. He'll like that. Uh, nostalgian, yeah. I think yes. so. Um, this I mean, is yeah, but... the voice of the nostalgians. <laughs> Nostalgerons. Uh, <laughs> bit, bit weird. Sorry. Uh, uh, no, we should definitely keep that in. Uh, uh, but no, uh, Benji is one of those uh, people sort of born in the wrong decade. <laughs> right. Uh, and I, I'm sure I mentioned it before, but uh, for a Doctor Who, I think I was doing Big Finish... Uh, we needed a 1978 payphone sound, and I emailed Benji and said, any ideas? And he said, oh, as it happens, I've actually got one under my desk. Wow. Okay, great. <laughs> and he owned a phone with the correct era <laughs> of uh, a ringtone for that. Lovely, lovely. Uh, so anyway, uh, Benji's done lots of stuff on uh, New Captain Scarlet, um, audiobooks for Big Finish, and some other secret bits and pieces which we might mention later Ooh, on. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the podcast theme. Yeah. Uh, Another young voice for the Jerry Anson podcast. Young-ish. It's nice to hear from people in their 20s and 30s, as well as those of who, who grew up with the, the shows in sort of the 60s, 70s, 80s. Of course it is. So, yeah. yeah, we can look forward to that later on. 
Great. Uh, now, uh, before we go any further, I should just say, if you're enjoying this podcast or if you have ever enjoyed the Jerry Anderson podcast, you can do us a big old favour and subscribe to the podcast on whichever platform you're listening to us on to make sure you get notifications every time a new pod appears. Uh, you can also, while you're there, rate us and leave us an honest but, you know, a nice review. That would be good. Uh, and then share us with your friends so they can hear us too. Uh, don't forget you can get in touch with us on Twitter. We'll be reading out a few of your tweets a bit later on uh, and just hashtag us Jerry Anderson podcast. Uh, uh, you can tag I'm Jamie Anderson or me, Richard N. James, and mm. we'll see your tweets. And hashtag Jerry Anderson podcast, too. Well, I think I said that. Oh, but did you? Can... Sorry. Yeah, I, but you can I was, say, say I was again, looking right. for something. Oh, see, were you? Unless I right. missed you. Oh, okay. Great. Well, I'm, I'm glad to see I'm making an impression, Jamie. Yeah, I'm sure you are. No, uh, no the thing I was looking for, actually, was my very special book. For right. The first section of this podcast. Yeah, have you got the head in the ice, have you? <laughs> Oh, not Is that, that a new novel by Richard James? <laughs> I think it might be. Anyway, Richard, we're going to be talking about that later. It's too early for you oh, to plug that. All right. Uh, I think, uh, in fact, we should let the band in okay. and get yeah. on with this week's Fab Facts. Right, yes. Come in. All right, I've put some biscuits and some squash out for you this week. Yeah, no, don't hog it. Just one at a time, honestly. Like children, okay. aren't they? I are uh, like children. Now, Richard, could you just fill in, explain the premise of Fab Facts while I go and fetch my book, please? <laughs> right, Over okay. to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye, Jamie. Uh, well, Fab Facts, as you probably will know, is the most exciting and interesting part of the podcast, whereby Jamie flicks through a copy of uh, Fab Facts. I've got I it shout here. Out, there it is. Uh, I shout out Fab, uh, 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 which he stops on a page, reads out a fantastic fact from the worlds of Jerry Anderson, uh, which leads to mirth and merriment or <laughs> indifference. Or... Mostly indifference. <laughs> oh, there we are. I think that's quite simple. Yes. So caught up to speed. Yeah, and I've got the book now. So uh, are you ready to do it, Richard? Born ready. Good. Uh, in that case, here we go. Fab. Uh, right, Richard, you yep. have stopped us on the spread of page 38 and 39 this oh. week. Interestingly, yep. this is a, an extra fab fact, uh, there is a, a picture of the original wooden um, carved model of Hudson the Rolls Royce from Terrorhawks, which yep. for many years um, was uh, in, uh, at home. Um, oh, right. Uh, our original family home, um, as I grew up in the late 80s and early 90s, and I used to push it around the carpet and uh, ah, play around with it. But I, I, don't know, I don't know what happened to it. It was a beautiful no. thing. Yes. Anyway, oh, well. the actual fact for this week uh, yes. is as follows. Oh. To simulate perspiration on the puppet's faces, an ordinary toothbrush was soaked in water and the bristles flicked to spray tiny droplets onto the small faces. Oh, that is so sweet. I quite like that. <laughs> oh, I think that's they nice. also used uh, spray bottles occasionally. But you'd get quite um, a big spread of spray with that, wouldn't you, I think? The idea of flicking a little toothbrush is very you get little, very specific. You can get quite, you know, quite detailed with that, couldn't you? Yeah. And it, <laughs> I mean, it was an amazing way to, sh to show stress Tension. and all that yeah, sort of stuff. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, on, you know, otherwise Im immovable faces. But I definitely yeah. remember in the early days watching me like, oh, wow. Yeah, well, talking about showing expression on immovable faces, I remember them doing something similar with Ted Shackleford in Space Precinct. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they'd get to, you know, they'd, they'd spray you if, if we had scenes where we were supposed to be hot or bothered or they, they, they would spray you. Even the, even the creatures in the masks, we'd have little bits of glycerine oh, dabbed on was, us. Was Orin ever sprayed? <laughs> well, that would be giving far too much away, I think. Um, oh, but enough. also, I mean, it, and also you get the tear sticks, of course, for, for human actors. Yeah. Little mental sticks to encourage the tears to flow if you've got an emotional scene. Yeah. How I mean, how do they do the tears on, on the puppets? That's really quite quite small. A bit of glycerine, perhaps? A little drop of something? Or? Pro probably, yeah. yeah. Apply with a cotton bud or something. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, there's all sorts of um, interesting fluid-related fab facts. Right, that's probably um, for another podcast, though, isn't no, it? No, no. Shram in Terror Hawks. His yeah. green drool was a mixture oh. of KY jelly and Swarfiga. Oh, yes. Nice. And uh, to, 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 to get the extra little light in the eyes, uh, they would often spread some sort of oil onto the surface of the eyes of the puppets. Yeah. Um, uh, even on Firestorm, we were applying WD-40 to the eyes of the puppets. Right. Because it just makes them sparkle more. Yes. And to life nicely. So, Don't try it at home, folks. <laughs> Good night's sleep no, will work just as well. Please do not put <laughs> WD-40 or anything else in your eyes, uh, just to be just to clarify that. Mm. Um, anyway, there you go. So yeah. lovely little tricks to add realism uh, and kind of... Uh, tension without having to change expression. Yeah, great. That's impressive stuff. Like it. And that's the end of this week's Fluid, Fluid Fact. Fact.
<laughs> Great. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Uh, uh, that really is ridiculous. Is it? Yeah, the fluid fact thing was ridiculous. Oh, I see. Fact itself. No, the actual fact was great. Yeah, so that, of course there it was. There you go. Yeah, yeah, great. Very nice. Uh, now, look, we have some posts on our Facebook page. Uh, so if you don't know about this, you need to head on over to Facebook if you're on uh, on there and uh, just search for the uh, Podstrons, the Facebook, Jerry Anderson Facebook listeners, no, the Jerry Anderson podcast listeners Facebook group, otherwise known as the Podstrons. Yeah, it's much easier to just say the Podstrons. Yeah, so search for us at uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Podstrons, uh, yep. where people have been posting all sorts of stuff. Yuhan has been uh, sharing Thunderbirds parodies from around the world. Uh, Simon Allen has been entering, uh, entertaining us with some fantastic picture quizzes. Um, but also, a few of them got together and they wanted to send us a rather personal message, Jamie. Have a listen to this. This is Ian Jacqueline. This is Richard Burnett. Ici Isabelle Saucier. Kia ora. I'm Carl Scott. This is Mark Wilson. Dave Lawson. Tom Woods. Washer Paul Hyder. And you're listening. And you are listening. Et vous écoutez. And you're listening. And you're listening. Neiman Zaiting, Jerry Anderson, the Booker. This is Abby Randall, and you are listening to the Jerry Anderson Podcast. The Jerry Anderson Podcast. Le podcast de Jerry Anderson. The Jerry Anderson Podcast. The Jerry Anderson Podcast. 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 This is Phil Steer, and you're listening to the Phil Steer Podcast. Oh, uh, Phil Steer. Oh, uh, Phil Steer. I Finally, mean, his time I, I has come. Have, I'd missed Phil Steer, and I'd actually forgotten <laughs> that this was the Phil Steer Podcast. <laughs> Only now reminded by it, Phil Steer's it, contribution. Exactly. There you go. Thank you very much to all our lovely Podstrons for putting that together. Uh, ben Page uh, has been posting on the page there on the, uh, on the Facebook group. Uh, fellow Podstrons, can anyone recommend a good article about the uses of fonts and typefaces in Jerry Anderson's series? Do you know anything about fonts and typefaces used in the Jerry Anderson series, Jamie? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, Futura, uh, Futura yeah. Bold in particular, and uh, Eurostyle. Excellent. Um, Eurostyle is a very kind of UFO era uh, yeah. font. And we still use Futura and Eurostyle quite a lot now. Um, uh -huh. But uh, maybe we should uh, maybe we should get an article about that on the Jerry Anderson website. Oh, Chris! Yes. Uh, well, I love you, Chris. Or actually, we might <laughs> even refer to uh, the lovely Justin T. Lee. Oh, yeah. Of uh, film and Super Marination and Thunderbird 65 and other bits and pieces. Okay, who's a, a real expert on the, on the visuals and the... The typeface type stuff. Yeah. So I'll have a word. Great. Uh, Mark Perkins posted a picture from The Chase saying these daytime TV quiz shows are really getting quite hard now. Uh, a picture of The Chase. Uh, the question was complete the following phrase. Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are what? Uh, what were the multiple choices? <laughs> Ready, go or launched. Oh, gosh. I think there's a Jerry Anderson fan working at the chase on ITV. There must there be must so be. many of these. Uh, Lauren uh, said, uh, upcycling done by a friend of a friend, and she posted a picture. Uh, Hella and I found an old Thunderbirds duvet set up in the loft and decided to upcycle it into a summer dress. Posted some pictures there. Really quite amazing. Very nicely amazing. done. And uh, Abby, so I have a small but growing collection of merchy merch, 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 mostly books. How do you all store your merch? Are you precious about keeping it immaculate or do you use it daily? Yeah, that's the thing. All this stuff you're getting from a store, does it just stay in the box and put on a shelf to keep it uh, immaculate? Or do you like to get it out and uh, have a little play occasionally? Jamie, don't look at me like that. I didn't look at anything out. No, I think I think <laughs> it's very important that, you know, it, it's tangible stuff and you should, yeah. you should enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there are people who can afford to buy three of everything yeah uh, one one to play with and wear or whatever it is yeah uh, one to keep for display and mm. one one to sell if mm. they rock it, rock it in value but mm -hmm. who's got the money in the space for that yes well i think i told you i used to do the same with um, doctor who magazine as it was back in the day doctor who monthly i think it was i used to buy three copies of that one to cut up one to cut up the pictures on the other side and one to read oh. and keep yeah yeah you see so uh, you're one I, of those people. You know, I, I still am one of those people, Jamie. And finally, Peter <laughs> Lippmann, who we both know and love, said, uh, often been wondering recently, are there many other podstrons out there who have been hugely privileged, like myself, to have been born in the 1950s and who were actually in front of their tellies as each Jerry Anderson series premiered for the very first time? To which Rebecca answered, I'll ask my dad. <laughs> there you go Brilliant. so a lovely spread of generations on the Facebook group all sorts of interesting and uh, entertaining stuff going on there so do do join in uh, three questions to answer and I shall let you in and you can join in the fun <laughs> Oh, there we are. Oh, right, Richard. This is quick five, five. Jamie. You're up first. Yeah, five questions for you. So, uh, Space 1999 guest stars Brian Blessed or Christopher Lee? Oh, Blessed. Oh. FAB or SIG? SIG. Cloud Base or Precinct 88? 
Oh, and oh. cow base. Oh, puppets, strings or rods? Oh, oh. come on. Rods now. Rods oh, now. Uh, Thunderbird 1 or Fireball XL5? 1. Way, well done. Very good. Now, Richard, rather embarrassingly. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've stolen one of my quick fire fives for <laughs> later. <laughs> uh, so oh, so now much. I'm going to have to change it. Well, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, hang I, on, I've got, I'm just doing that now. I like to make work for you. I can't believe that. Of all the blooming quick fire fives, which we do come up with <laughs> independently from one yeah, another, you yeah, copied do. one. No, well, I obviously haven't copied, have yeah. I? Great minds anyway. think alike, Jamie. That's all it is. Yes. Anyway, that's that, and it was. I'm just gonna, gonna take a breath now to recover. Yeah, I would. From, yeah, uh, yeah, the stress okay. of it. Yeah, yeah it's very difficult. It, there are some things, you know, we, we give it, we give ourselves an either or option, and really, it's much more complicated than that. Of course, it is. Just but a it's bit of all fun. part of the fun, isn't it? Of course, it is. Yeah, that's right. So yes, did you agree with my decisions, listeners? Mm. Let us know on the podcast group or mm. uh, on Twitter, mm. um, especially if you disagree vehement, vehemently, vehemently, Ver- vehemently, very vehemently. <laughs> <laughs> if you disagree, let us know. Yeah. Uh, now, Richard. Yeah. Everyone looks forward to this bit. Oh yeah, it's a randomizer. <laughs> no. Oh. But I think it's possibly one of the most varied and exciting newsy news 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 sections we've ever had. Yes, I'm looking forward to this myself. Okay. Well, then, shall we do it? Let's do it. It's the Jerry Anderson News. Well, I realise I've started adopting your newsy, news, news, news thing without even thinking about it now, even though I used to kind of be mildly irritated by it. <laughs> That's why I, I work my way into people's minds, you see. That's how yeah. I work. And my whole it's career quite, has been based on that. It's, it's quite creepy. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, Richard, you yes. know this first because you were there with me. Yeah. We've already shared photos with the uh, the podcast listeners group, so yep. if you haven't seen them, then uh, pop over there and have a look. Yep. Uh, but uh, a couple of weekends ago... Yeah, I suppose it will be by now, yes. time of release. Mm. Um, we were very kindly invited by uh, Robert Taylor, one of our podsterons. Yes. To the Royal Albert Hall. Yes. For uh, something which kind of became uh, a special celebration of the first anniversary of this very podcast. Again. It? Yeah, we're really eking yeah. it out, aren't we? We are. I, I think we're done now. There's okay. no more celebration time. All right. I mean, we're almost at uh, the second anniversary now. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we went We went along. We were uh, special guests. Yes. We have uh, uh, Robert and his wife, Lois, and son, Alex. Yes. Uh, we had a lovely time. Uh, we were wined and dined. Oh, weren't we just? Uh, in a very special room. Uh, uh, Paul Main, another podster on, was there. He's a friend of, uh, of Rob Taylor's. Mm-hmm. And Paul had put together some TV Twenty One uh, menu card items, yeah. and uh, I mean, it was it was all lovely. Yeah, uh, we were joined by um, two interviewees from the podcast: Mary yes. Anderson, Indeed. my mother, Indeed. and uh, and Phil Ford, yes, right, right. new Captain Scarlet, and beyond. So. Um, yeah, I, it was a lovely day, and then obviously we went and uh, and listened to the Space Spectacular. But before we went in, we were we were met by Anthony Inglis. We were. It was the conductor who came in and said hello, which was a, a lovely surprise. Yeah, that's right. Um, amazing music, fantastic orchestra, wasn't yeah, it? And there, yeah. What was our kind of our shared highlight was the um, the Star Trek. Oh, the medley uh, of uh, medley, Star Trek which themes. Was really lovely, beautiful. Yeah, but great music throughout. Yeah. Now. Uh, half time went for, for dessert. Didn't well, we call it the interval dessert. in the theatre world. Sorry, half time. Yeah, I don't know. That's when you that. have oranges and a sponge down. Yeah, no, we didn't. Definitely didn't have that. Uh, <laughs> no, in fact, we had that at our curry, didn't we? Anyway, uh, that was very strange. Right. Anyway, no, no. We, at, uh, during the interval, we had a lovely dessert, and then in the second half, at yep. the very end, yep. something rather crazy happened. Yes. Um, so, well, for those of you who weren't there, which was most of you. It's a very special afternoon for us on stage because we have with us in the audience a certain person who, certain people who are very close to the originator of this next piece of music. Thunderbirds, of course, with the wonderful puppetry of Jerry Anderson. And I'm happy to say that in the audience this afternoon, for one performance only, is his widow, Mary Anderson, and his son, Jamie Anderson. So this one's going to be for you. We're going to play. 
play the Thunderbirds theme music. And by the way, for those of you, there are a lot of people who are, I know are huge Jerry Anderson fans. So if you, there is a, a podcast that Jerry Anderson does, Google Jerry Anderson podcast, and it's fantastic information on that um, website. You really got to want us to play this opening piece of music. You've got to shout it out. Really go for it. All the children as well, please. Here we go. And... Yes, it was all a bit weird and wonderful. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, a huge thank you to Robert Taylor, of course, for inviting us along for a very yes. special afternoon. Incredible. Yeah, it was it was brilliant. Uh, yeah, and, and very kind of uh, of Anthony English to to give us a shout out and yeah. and for the crowd to be so enthusiastic. I mean, and... literally, the Thunderbirds theme got the hugest cheer of the afternoon. It was yeah. really lovely, wasn't it? Yeah. So I want to know this, Jamie. Is there anyone out there who is now listening to the podcast because they were at the Royal Albert Hall a couple of weekends ago? If so, do drop us an email, podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk, and we'll gladly read it out next time. Yeah, be great. As long as you're enjoying it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I listened once. I stopped uh, uh, when you mentioned that email thing. Uh, Anyway, (laughs) it was brilliant. And uh, if you want to see the full performance... Uh, we have actually put it up on our YouTube channel, so you can see the entire thing uh, from where we were sat. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was just brilliant. Lovely. So, yeah, thanks, everyone, and uh, especially to to Rob Taylor and to Anthony Inglis. Yes, great. Uh, wow. Yeah. Anyway, Richard, so that was a great day, but then what happened? Well, the then what happened? It, was all, it all went a bit Jerry Anderson for me for the whole weekend, because the next morning I had an interview on uh, BBC Radio Berkshire about the book. I don't know if you know I've written a novel. don't like to talk about it. You don't think you mentioned yeah. it. But, of course... What was the first thing she mentioned? Well, have a listen to this. Right, my first guest this morning is an accomplished local actor and playwright who recently appeared in the West End in the Olivier-nominated adaptation of David Williams' Gangster Granny. And as if that wasn't enough, he's also a devotee of one of our area's most celebrated figures. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, isn't it great hearing that? Cookham's Richard James performed as part of Jerry Anderson's last live action series and now hosts the Jerry Anderson podcast, celebrating all the work that Anderson's produced from his Maidenhead studios, from the Thunderbirds to Captain Scarlet to Space 1999. And he joins me now. There's so much to discuss, Richard. Uh, yes. Just reading that out, it's like you want to stop everyone. Just hang on, I'll stop. <laughs> right. I don't quite know That's amazing. where to start. But the podcast interests yes. me, this Jerry Anderson podcast, because I had a little squiz. You get great guests on the well, Gary Newman. <laughs> Gary Newman is a Jerry Anderson fan. Who would have thought it? Chris Packham, John Coleshaw. Yes. Uh, yeah, fantastic guests. Um, because Jerry Anderson really touched so many people's lives, didn't mm. he? I mean, we can all name Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet, but there are some real fans out there, and they know the minutiae, they know all the characters and all the vehicles and which stories they appeared in, and it's just across the board. If you've got to remember, Jerry Anderson started working in the late 50s and early 60s. That's 40 or 50 years of entertainment, yeah. and it's touched an awful lot of people. So, yes, the Jerry Anderson podcast, I host it with Jamie Anderson, who's Jerry's son. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. because I did a Doctor Who kids fanzine show, and mm. obviously they know everything, Doctor yes. Who fans. Do you feel a pressure when you're doing something like this, or is it nice that you have 
um, you know, Jerry's son there yes, as backup to exactly. put you right if you do suddenly Absolutely. don't know something. Absolutely. Jamie is the encyclopedia, really. I'm not quite sure what I bring to the podcast other than a, a <laughs> smile and a cup of tea. Uh, yeah, so, um, yes, he knows all the stuff because he was there and saw it all happen pretty much. Um, and uh, obviously, I suppose there's a link because I was in Space Precinct, Jerry's last uh, live action series. So uh, together, we kind of uh, managed to put out about an hour and a half's content every week. I know, weekly. It's incredible. I know. Yeah. What was it like working with Jerry? Well, it's interesting, isn't it? People ask me that, and I always say I didn't really work with Jerry. I worked for Jerry. Right, so, yes, that's more. Yeah, he was specific. the producer. Um, so, to be honest, I didn't see an awful lot of him um, because I spent most of my time either in the makeup room because I was playing an, an alien police officer. Were you green? Uh, I was sort of greeny brown, <laughs> yes, with remote-controlled <laughs> eyes. Ooh. Oh, yes. And, um, and obviously, the, uh, uh, apart from that, I was on the studio floor. So I didn't meet Jerry very often. Uh, but what I do remember... Remember him uh, is as a as a nice self-effacing. I mean, you wouldn't believe he was a TV genius, really. Um, to me, he was more a businessman, you know, financing the production, getting it off the ground and uh, keeping it running. And in terms of that look then of you having remote controlled eyes, would he have <laughs> sort of said, I want this character to... How involved was he at that stage very, in his career? Very was involved he? at the beginning, uh, you know, during the audition. I mean, I auditioned for Jerry. My first audition, I remember, was with Jerry Anderson. Uh, so very involved with that. Very involved with, the, I think, the design of the creatures. I remember in one of the first weeks, we all had to put our masks on and our prosthetic faces and uh, walk down to his office and sort of parade in front of him <laughs> to show him what we look like. But the interesting thing is I met my wife on that show as well. Oh, so, um, amazing. What well, was she? Well, she was uh, behind the camera, so she oh, was an editor. she wasn't an alien as no, well. No, no. But she must have got a shot when I took the mask off, mustn't she? <laughs> there we are. So there Richard, we are. you never yeah. mentioned you are in Space Precinct. <laughs> Again, something else I like to keep quiet, Jamie. <laughs> Great yeah, interview. The lovely Kirsten O'Brien there, who used to appear on, on Smart. I mean, my I kids remember. used to watch that. CBBC, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so that was rather nice, wasn't it? And then she went on to talk about um, other stuff I'd been in and working with Burt Reynolds and uh, David Williams and all that sort of stuff, you know. Right, so quite yeah. a, what they call a wide-ranging interview. Very nice. Yeah. yeah and uh, did you get to mention your uh, your series of novels you, you're releasing? Briefly. Good. Uh, would you like to mention those now? <laughs> well, that's very kind. Well, book two... Jamie, of the Bowman of the Yard series, is out on July the 2nd, which is the day after this podcast appears. Tuesday, July the 2nd, uh, the second book called The Devil in the Dock will be available Ooh. for paperback and Kindle and Kobo and Nook and Apple Books and all that sort of stuff. So if you're enjoying the story so far of The Head in the Ice, book one, I think you're going to love The Devil in the Dock. I'm sure they will. Uh, so, yeah, Podstrons, if you've enjoyed Richard's fantastic contributions to this podcast over the last 54 <laughs> episodes, yeah. uh, then I'm sure he would love it if you would buy his book. And also, it's it's good. Yeah, well, so, that's kind. Thank you. Yeah, great. Yeah. And also, so, of course, lots of short stories. If you go to bowmanoftheyard.co.uk and subscribe to my newsletter, you can get some, well, there'll be three free short stories by Tuesday. There. Brilliant. Done with the plug? I think I'm done with the plug, yeah. Do you want it back? I'm going to pull it otherwise, yeah. Uh, OK, so if we, uh, <laughs> if you'd like to support Richard, uh, we'd, we'd really love that. So thank you in advance, Podstrons. Uh, yeah. If you'd like some Jerry Anson merch news, yeah. well, I've got some for you. Hooray. Uh, the uh, range of polo shirts that we've been releasing over the last few weeks have been ridiculously popular. Currently mm. available are a uh, Stingray Wasp variant, uh, Spectrum Roundel, Alpha Moonbase logo, and shadow logo uh -huh. and due to extremely popular demand yeah. ridiculously popular demand uh we have we have now released the international rescue version oh, of the polos of course uh, yeah and I, i'm pretty sure that's going to go down pretty yes well. um and we put it on offer for the first week so you can say if you could off it but they're nice. really nice so go and grab one of those Great. Uh, also if you like to be slightly more subtle about your fandom although in a quite a uh loud way <laughs> right okay <laughs> Um, we, we're, we're playing around with these uh, a new range of heroes of t-shirts and, yeah. uh, and other bits and pieces. So they've got the, the names of the characters from your favourite Anderson shows uh -huh. on the front, but no direct reference to the show itself. So they're, they're kind of a bit mysterious. People oh, might yeah. think it's a band. Or, oh, I like that. You know, but people in the know, yeah. they'll know. Yeah. And they'll know that you know. Yeah. So if you want to show people that you know and they'll know that you know, yeah. then... <laughs> The Heroes of Moonbase Alpha yeah, uh, t-shirt and thing is for you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we've kind of had a bit of a musical theme, Richard, so let's round off the Jerry Anson News with some yes. more musical stuff. Okay. Our randomizer friend, Chris Dale, 
has done a brilliant article about his top 10 choices for music music themed musical episodes of Jerry Anderson shows ah. so those that are based around some sort of musical content um, uh, and weirdly I have just got an inkling that that theme is going to continue to later in the podcast uh, oh, yes. With our interviewee and also very possibly good. with a randomizer. Yeah, so, right. Wow. Funny that, isn't it? It's a very music themed yeah, one. That's great. Uh, so go to the Jerry Anderson website and enjoy that. Uh, go to the Jerry Anderson YouTube channel and watch the Royal Albert Hall performance. Um, and now we are at the end of this week's Jerry Anderson News. That was the news. That was the news. Yeah. I often think if your neighbours can hear you do that I once know. a week and must think, I know. what is he on about? Well, do you know, because it's such a lovely day, I almost took all this recording stuff out into the garden to do the podcast from my garden. And then I thought, well, that's all very well, but there are certain times when I just have to sing along to things. And yeah. what will they think? Well, no less than they already do, I suppose. <laughs> no, no, you're quite right. <laughs> anyway, you're listening to the Jerry Anderson podcast. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to us on whichever platform you're listening to us on to rate, review, share with all your friends. You can get in touch with us on Twitter, hashtag us Jerry Anderson podcast. You can tag him. I'm Jamie Anderson or me, Richard N. James. Uh, join our Facebook group and so on and so forth. Uh, and I do have some tweets to read out from the week. Ready for these? I'm ready. Five. Stephen Watson tweeted to say he grew up in the 60s with Thunderbirds, then loved all the rest, even Joe 90, as I recall, until Space 1999, after which my interest faded. It's been rekindled by the Jerry Anderson podcast, Aww. which has had me revisiting old favourites and finding new ones. Love that. that. Great. Awesome. That's nice. So we're, we're a tool of rediscovery. <laughs> Think that's... Great nickname. You should put that on your badge. <laughs> okay. Four. This one's from James Pilson Wood. Late to the pod 54 party, he said. Another great podcast. Finding a nice frame for my signed podcast photo. And found a Firestorm poster on eBay. My Firestorm collection is almost complete. Lovely. Wow. I didn't know there were Firestorm posters on eBay. Backers only, so somebody I must see. have decided... Uh, yeah. No wall space. I'll chuck that on eBay. Yeah, Fair okay. Enough. Fair enough. Three. This one's from Josh Long, who says, Wow, another SIG podcast from Jamie and Richard and Chris Dale and a heartwarming, exciting interview with the very talented Jake Dutton. He says, Great to hear from someone who discovered the Anderson shows around the same time as me. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, that's, well, that's exactly what I'm saying about this interview coming up with Benji as well. It's yeah. the through the decades discovery, but everybody's got a shared love of these things. Yeah, exactly. Two. Mark Wilson says, Chris Dale, please review Torchy on another live randomizer as it was hilarious. And it's had the opposite effect on me. I find myself wanting to watch you do, do more live Torchy episodes. <laughs> Uh-oh, poor Chris. Not sure how he'll feel about that. Not happy, I can <laughs> assure you. One. And finally, the incompetent pilot tweeted... Best intro ever. Nice. Well, hopefully we raised the bar this week. <laughs> exactly. But maybe not. Yeah, there we are. So thank you for all your tweets. Don't forget, you can tweet us throughout the week whenever you listen. Uh, just hashtag us Jerry Anderson Podcast and we'll be sure to pick them up and maybe give you a mention next time. Right, Richard. Oh, it's, no. It's your time oh. to be in the spotlight now. Okay, go on then. With my first one slightly amended because you copied me. I did not. PWOR or SIR. Oh. P-W-O-R. W-S-P or WASP? Oh, WASP. Terrorhawks, 1010 or 1090? 1090. Organisations, Bishop or Shadow? Shadow. And Cool Tech, Big Rat or Sid? Sid. Yeah, oh, yeah I, I did have to think about that. Yeah, yeah it's I, that, I, saw, I saw it in your face. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It, I think it's the, it's the kind of the spaciness of Sid, isn't it? It's the, it's the orbiting, <laughs> orbitingness. It's the so the spaciness and the intruderiness <laughs> and the detectoriness of, uh, of the whole thing. Exactly, um, yes. exactly. Very good though. Cool, they were nice. They really do make you think, don't they? Yeah, thanks. You, obviously, my first one was going to be F F A P or S I G. Of course, to, it was. Yeah, it. that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers Ooh. for that. Tell you what, though, Jamie, mm. you have the door open. I, what? I meant to shut it. Well, oh. It's letting a terrible draft. This is the voice <sighs> of the Podsterons. <laughs> that is ridiculous. The faces <laughs> you pull, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that's my acting. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. Very, very that's good. why I'm not Olivier nominated. I thank you. <laughs> uh, right, Richard. Well, it is the voice of the Podsterons and... Um, well, since it's the voice of the postulants, shall we literally start with a literal voice that's been recorded from somebody's mouth? Let's literally do that. Okay. 
Hello, gentlemen. Thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts on the Fab Worlds of Anderson event. Richard, the bee's knees of MCs, whose Wogan-esque genial hosting permeated the whole weekend, just like a classic Barry Gray theme. Our brave knight, Chris Dale, faced a live randomizer torchy episode in gladiatorial combat, armed only with the rapier wit, and emerged victorious. And Jamie, despite executively producing the whole thing to perfection, had time for everyone, those attending in costume, guests, talented artists and model makers, and even us humble attendees. You all turned the whole event into a living Father's Day card, like the other occasions in the year when we raise a glass and say, cheers, Jerry, which by accounts on Saturday night, you certainly did that as well. Thank you all. Oh. What a lovely message, Jay. Thank you so much. Yeah, that is nice. The bee's knees of MCs. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Again, that's probably better than a tool of rediscovery. Or <laughs> yeah, I think calling on, you on balance, yeah. yeah but what's yeah. nice, he says there about Father's Day, but we worried, weren't we? We're not worried, but wondering how, how the Sunday would go with it being Father's Day and so on and whether families would be out and about doing other things. And then we just mm. thought, well, hang on. Where would most fathers <laughs> want to be on Father's Day? <laughs> exactly. Looking at Thunderbird 2 rolling yes. down the runway and, uh, yes. and p- possibly attending a uh, Fab Live Live. Exactly. And there they all were. It was lovely. Yeah, very nice. We do love to hear your audio clips, so uh, just uh, record them on your phone. Uh, make sure they're nice and pithy and, uh, and nice and short, and uh, we'll be sure to play them and send them into podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk, and uh, we'll try and play it next time. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, yeah. But if you don't fancy chatting into your phone, mm-hmm. uh, you can write us some words instead, like Mark did. Yeah. Mark says, hello, gentlemen. Oh, hello. I had an excellent time at Fab Worlds. My video of the event is online. Uh, and like I said, I've dedicated it to the memory of Shane Rimmer. It's Lovely. Very nice. yeah. So you can find Mark's uh, YouTube channel, Dalek Sram, mm-hmm. on YouTube. Talking of YouTube, my channel has now reached 1,000 subscribers. Oh, nice. Uh, so for a special video, I did a Q&A and got very interesting Anderson-related questions. Oh. Uh, uh, he's, oh, he's got one, So Yeah. Uh, if you could mix together two Jerry Anderson theme tunes to make a new one, which one would you pick? My answer was Terrorhawks and Firestorm, because uh, they're both by the same composer, and they're my favourites. Fair enough. What would your answers be? Crikey. Good work. That's mm. nice. I like the idea of a mashup of a couple of themes. That would work quite nicely, I think. I think I'd go for... Yeah. I'd probably go for Stingray... Because mm. uh, it's got that lovely sort of powerful driving rhythm. Bum, and bum, bum, that's right. Bum, bum, but you carry on doing that. Yep. Carry, carry on doing that, and I'm going to sing over the next theme. Off you go. Yes. Yes. That's exactly what I was thinking. That is exactly what I was thinking. Stingray mashup and yeah, space precincts. Yeah, that would work. There you go. Yeah. Thanks for that, Mark. That's lovely. Um, there you go. That's our joint answer, Mark, because yeah. we were thinking the same thing. We're so simpatico these exactly. days. Exactly. Now, we've also heard from Ash. Uh, now, Mark mentions Firestorm there, and here's a very niche question from Ash and his mum. Uh, he says, hi, Jamie and Richard. Hello. Mm. All right. Uh, Jamie, could you tell me whether we will see cameos of Duke Dexter or Johnny Swunara from Stingray? My mum and I were watching Stingray yesterday and thought that these two rarely seen characters could have larger roles. Could we even see spin-off shows for them? Thanks. That's from Ash and his mum. That is a niche, niche, niche question. Isn't it? Uh, now, I, I mean, Ash there is referring to having those uh, cameos in Firestorm. Yes. Um, now, the one thing I can say is there will not be cameos of any <laughs> Century 21 characters in Firestorm. Definitely separate universes, uh-huh. avoiding copyright issues with ITV yeah. shows, etc., etc. Yeah, um, you might see little references and nods towards the old shows, yeah. but you won't have literal ones. Uh, and also, I'm not quite sure how Duke Dexter and, and Johnny Swinara would fit into the Firestorm universe. <laughs> <laughs> but well, who knows who if they might knows? get their own spin-off show in the future? And in fact, if you um, if you want to read some more some more ideas about potential spin-off shows from Thunderbirds in particular, there's a great article by Chris on the Jerry Anderson website. So Ooh, look at that. Nice, lovely. Ah, uh, I have an email mm-hmm. from Chris McCarthy. Oh, hello, Chris. It says, hi, guys. Hi. I bet you get loads of emails saying <laughs> how much people enjoy the Space Centre. Well. So I'm putting a week's delay on this one. Well, you, even so, Chris, which is lovely, you've come through with a, a load of other ones too, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he says, it really was good at Fab Worlds. Mm. We only made it to the Sunday and spent most of the day there. Great stuff on show and lots of like-minded people. It was even a treat to meet you. Even a tr- to meet you, I think, is the stress on that word. It was even a treat to meet you. There you go. 
You're right, thank you. Uh, <laughs> after eventually managing to give Richard some cash Hooray. and take off with a space precinct book, I started reading it, really enjoying it. Yeah, great. I'm still only on the introduction. What? <laughs> hang on, hang on, you wrote <laughs> the introduction. Might be, yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> just 12 months till the next convention then. Yeah. Cheers from Chris. Well, yeah, who yeah. knows? We'll see. But maybe there'll be one sooner. Who knows? Yeah, but yes, yeah. well, I, we'd, we'd love to go back to the Fables of Anderson because yeah. we had a great time. We did. Yes, that's right. Uh, finally for this week, young Matthew Alderman Harris says, Hello, Jamie, Richard and Chris. Thanks hello, for hello, another hello. brilliant podcast. It was great to meet the three of you at the Space Centre for Pod 53. And thanks to you, all three of you for signing my Thunderbirds 50th anniversary book. Oh, yes, I Pleasure. remember. Yeah. I really enjoyed the Fab Worlds of Anderson event and came away with four posters which now hang on the wall of my room. Three four. of which, yeah, are the work of the amazing Chris Thompson, and the fourth poster is a Thunderbird 2 cross-section by the equally amazing Graham Bleethman, which he very kindly signed for me. My favourite model there was the large Thunderbird 2, which was absolutely incredible. It was amazing to see it taxiing along the runway. Yes, Wasn't it, it was just? amazing. amazing. Uh, it was brilliant to see the podcast on the Randomizer live, uh, although I do think you were a bit mean to Chris to make him have to sit through another episode of Torchy. Uh, maybe Chris could take his revenge by making Jamie watch Joe 90. Yeah, good point. Let's see about that. <clears throat> uh, it was uh, nice to hear some more new Captain Scarlet on the randomizer last week, as it hasn't been on the randomizer since pod 19. Well, he's paying attention. Finally, I have a question. Is there any news of the Lego Thunderbird 2? I would very much like this to become a set and hope Lego decide to make it. FAB and SIG. Uh, and that's from Matthew. F FAB and SIG, which yeah, is yeah, not all. Not there, all. I know. No, that's true. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Lego Thunderbird 2. As mm. many of you will probably know, the Lego Ideas website had a great Thunderbird 2 model which reached the threshold of 10,000 supporters to be able to put forward for review with the Lego yep. Ideas team. Yep. Um, we have no more news at this point. Uh, uh, I am vaguely in touch with Lego about this sort of stuff. Uh, and if, if there's any news, I'm sure they'll make it public anyway, but uh, mm. we'll be sure to get that info. Uh, it, you know, it's it's difficult because it goes to review. Yeah. They have to go, right, well, what is the cost of making this set? Yeah. What is the potential for the market? They have to make a very commercial decision. And the, the 10,000 supporters is a great indicator that there are people out there who yeah. want it. But <clears throat> at the end of the day, it's in the laps of the commercial Lego gods. Yes. And here they are now. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Doing the can can weirdly. Uh, no, uh, I don't know what I don't know what was going out of no, my brain no, today. No. Too much coffee. Oh, that's interesting, though, isn't it? I mean, they got the they got the ten thousand uh, supporters, as it were. But they must know from previous experience that um, you know those ten thousand supporters may not uh, equate ten thousand customers. You know, out no. of that, you might only get two thousand sales. And uh... yeah, exactly. But I suppose they're hoping that those supporters are indicative of a wider audience. Yeah, yeah. So let's yeah. see. But the moment there's news, Matthew. We'll yeah. be certain to let you know here and everywhere else. Absolutely, yeah. So thank you to all of you who emailed in and sent your voice clips and various things. If you've got a question or a mm -hmm. thought or a comment or mm -hmm. a complaint, mm -hmm. anything like that, mm -hmm. send it in podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk uh, or tweet us because Richard will probably scrape your tweet from the Twitter sphere and read it out. <laughs> yes, probably will. Anyway, we'd love to, to hear from you. We'd love to answer your questions. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, now, you've been talking to someone very interesting, haven't you? <laughs> yes, if, I... if he did so say, say so himself. He didn't say that. No, <laughs> I have been talking to somebody very interesting, and yeah. that interesting person is Benji Clifford. Uh, Benji did our amazing podcast opening and closing mashups. Yes, uh, including the very special Christmas version. I don't know if you remember that, Richard. I do fondly. Yes, went down rather well. Yeah, uh, he's also produced music for the Spectrum Files audio books, where he did his very best sort of. Barry Gray-esque vibe in there, which was really lovely. Nice. Uh, he's done some other secret things for me. Mm. Um, I think Benji did the the dialogue cut and sync on the minisode of Firestorm. From oh, Miami. great. Uh, so he, yeah. he's quite intertwined and obviously there's a lot of stuff for Big Finish and all their Doctor Who ranges. Yes. But uh, he came to the world of Jerry Anderson uh, in the 90s, I think. Uh -huh. So, uh, again, another interesting voice is, who was part of that resurgence. Yeah. Um, and he's also got a bit of a, a retro vibe about him in general. So he's yeah. got a real appreciation of everything 60s, 70s and beyond. So, without giving away any further information, mm -hmm. should we just hear from Benji himself? Yeah. Here he is. Hello, I'm Benji Clifford. I'm a sound designer, musician, and uh, Jamie called me a retro something or another, a dite. Whatever. <laughs> a, not, a retro nostalgian, I called you. Benji. Retro nostalgian, yes. Well, I think that's a very accurate term. 
It's a bit weird, isn't it? But you are, I, I think I also said you, you were born out of time or in the wrong decade or something because you, you exude a sort of maybe 70s vibe. Is that I fair? Like a, yeah, I like a bit. Well, hopefully all the, all the positive bits of the 70s and maybe oh, not, yeah, so much the, not so much the negative bits of it. No, no, yeah, no. It's only, awful only 70s, the, man. <laughs> only yeah. the best bits. Only the best bits. Uh, so I'm talking to you as a fan, I think, or at least someone who's enjoyed some Anderson shows in his life and maybe still does, but also as a professional contributor to some things, which we'll get onto later. Um, so I would very much appreciate it if you could uh, wind time back to when you were actually born, not the 70s. When were you actually born? So I was born in 1991. Oh, you're one of those. One of right, those, a, a 90s proper, child. proper baby, yeah. Goodness me. Okay, so we go back to the early 90s in that case. So how is it that you are even vaguely aware of any Jerry Anderson show um, from before Space Precinct when you're that age? So I'll tell you, actually, because I was thinking about this in the lead up uh, to our discussion. And my first interaction with... Um, with Thunderbirds was actually when I was at I was at um, primary school and somebody mm. brought in this video right get this of a thing that wasn't Thunderbirds it was actually I think it was Blue Peter with these weird Thunderbirds style puppets um, which were made out of like toilet roll tubes or something and it was it was truly right? it was truly dreadful and I remember the sadness of my friend telling me oh apparently so and so has brought in Thunderbirds it's really good I've got, I've got a copy of it at home and then we saw it and and we were really disappointed that, that it wasn't the real thing and so that was actually my first <laughs> my first expectation is utterly like oh oh really but no I got into it because the chap over the road a young lad gave me his Tracy Island that was the big first step. Wow. He gave it to me. He was, he was, by this point, he was like, yeah, I'm actually into, I'm into WWF now. Like, that's my thing. <laughs> you can have it. So he gave me that. And I remember thinking this is like the greatest gift ever because it was just mm. unbelievable. And from there, um, they were doing the reruns of Thunderbirds on the telly. From there, I got into Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet. And it just kind of grew on me, really, because, because it was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. You you are, I think, one of the only people I've ever spoken to who got into the toy first and <laughs> then into the show. That's a weird way around, but I, I suppose it shows the power of the kind of uh, the play pattern vibe of, of Thunderbirds and all that. Well, I think it's because as well, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't on the same when I was, as you know, you know, when I, in that particular generation, I didn't watch it as though it was something to watch. It was reruns mm. later on and... And so, yeah, that was my first encounter was seeing it and for being familiar with it. And then when the I actually saw it, it was like, yeah, this is incredible. I, I've got the toys to this. Come on. Amazing. OK, that's a really interesting way to come to it. So then uh, having had the cool toys and stuff, did Thunderbirds meet, exceed uh, or fall below your expectations having played with the, with the Tracy Island set? Well, I mean, can you can you imagine the feeling of somebody when you look up to see your toys uh, at look pretty accurate as well. Um, mm. Doing, you know, actually doing what they're supposed to do, seeing something actually fly and like fire coming out of the, the exhausts. And, you know, it, it absolutely blew my mind. And the thing is as well, when I, you know, when I was a kid, the, the shows that um, impacted on me um, the most uh, were the ones that were very realistic and, and, you know, with Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet, there was something about it that just appealed to me because it was unlike anything. You know, it's like, why do you want to watch things with grown-ups in? It's so boring. That's what they put on in the day when when you're off, you know, when you're ill from school. <laughs> there's some old western on the TV. No, it's like real people. The the best telly is 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 when you watch these, you know, incredibly, you know, detailed puppets doing amazing things and lots of explosions. That's what we're all in it for. Yeah, it's all for the explosions, isn't it? Really. I mean, compared to other stuff at the time, I don't know what other stuff was on for kids in the mid-late 90s. Uh, biker Mice from Mars and that kind of thing. Yeah, I had all the toys for Biker Mice from Mars as well, actually. <laughs> yeah, Biker Mice from Mars. The thing is, you know, Power Rangers, I suppose, and stuff like that. Yeah. But the thing about this is that that kind of always appealed to me is that it, it never patronised you. And and mm. I've, I've never, I still am not a fan of any television or characters that, that are patronising. And the thing about um, about all these shows is that actually 
they talk to you, you're on the same level. It doesn't dumb things down. It's very much, they can they can be talking about, I mean, you know, if you, the example of like Thunderbirds, you're talking about real disasters and people in control rooms activating switches and buttons and talking about things that have no bearing in the real world, but you believe it and you're completely, you know, they're not saying, oh, we better press this special red button that might, it's very much, Pressing the such and such button, doing this, and it's like, oh, it's like this is real, and it's down to the wire. It's exciting and it's, yep. it's fresh. So that's why I think that's the real appeal for me was that. Yeah, uh, it's, again, interesting that your um, kind of fascination extends to the overly technical kind of aspects <laughs> and funny named technology. I mean, there are lots of auto something, auto ejector, auto yeah, seat, yeah. <laughs> auto toilet, whatever. Uh, but yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. It was kind of, it, it took its own little world extremely seriously. I, I love uh, things that do that. And, and yeah. it, because as well, it shows confidence in, in actually what it's trying to put across. You know, it, all of, all of the Anderson shows are very comfortable with their own identities and, it, yes. you know, they're genre defining as well, which I think makes a huge, you know, it's, it's obvious to me that they are what they are and they're happy to be what they are whatever yeah. that means <laughs> <laughs> no no you're right though they, just they speaking kind of... on their behalf <laughs> <laughs> i've got a message in <laughs> phrase uh, as, yeah they absolutely accept your phrase well that super Mario Nation world you know it, it totally owned puppetry and took it to uh, a level far beyond whatever had come before and and really hasn't been surpassed since no substitute so, uh, absolutely stuff. no substitutes that's the thing so were you watching Thunderbirds and Scarlet on sort of BBC Two evening reruns then? Was it was that Absolutely, was happening in yeah, the early 2000s? That, that's what was happening, yeah. And then later, um, I think they did it again later on, maybe in the late 90s, early 2000s. But yeah, certainly at that time it was the reruns. And it was like, I, th- I might, I might, goodness, I might actually have a tape of it somewhere in the loft of my old VHS. <laughs> I, t- I recorded them. I distinct, I distinctly remember recording a, a couple of them. And it, it was huge as well. I remember um, that it was almost, it was a, a bit of a relaunch, wasn't it? You know, it was all suddenly Massive, yeah. back out there again and the toys were everywhere and kids in the playground were, were talking about it and had the lunch boxes and stuff. And it, it was, it was a big thing. I remember that, yeah, from school, it was cool. And it was, that's what was happening. Yeah. Again, amazing that something from the 60s can be thought of as being cool for kids in the 90s and the 2000s. It's just uh, amazing, really. But it's it's not dated as well. It's not like that dated. It's not the pace of it was quick and interesting. It wasn't as you think of old TV. Again, I go back to the Western thing, but, you know, all those old shows. They're all so sort of they talk like this and everybody's really slow. Whereas with this, it's got a pace and kids can relate to it and kids their attention spans aren't lost yeah absolutely and part, of that, anyway. part of that and because you mentioned voices is is the voice actors you Definitely, know voices yeah. like shane rimmers and david grahams and, and all of those uh they, they just kind of brought an extra life and excitement to the puppets the puppet characters themselves so that must have been something else that pulled you in, surely. Well, definitely, you know, and, and it again, it takes itself seriously. It's like these, it's like what you imagine movie actors to sound like, if that makes sense. They're all doing these incredibly kind of bold and big voices and everybody's talking and you think, wow, this is big. You know, it's not, it's not some bloke on the BBC doing a, a little voice like, you know, very, it's big and it takes itself seriously. And it's just, it just everything about it, I use the word awesome, but it was awesome. It, it, there were so many elements. It was everything when you put it together. It works and and it makes you feel excited to watch and, and enthused by what they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and one of those uh, awesome, massive elements is the music, obviously. Oh, yes. Uh, so t- tell me your kind of early childhood feeling toward the, towards the music and, and how you feel about it now. Uh, as a professional composer. Composer. <laughs> um, well, I remember, especially, especially listening to the music, there was a thing on the radio that I taped on a cassette tape um, where they were playing various bits of TV music and uh, mm. the Thunderbirds theme was on there because it kind of can't not be really. Um, and yeah, you know, it was it was like on there, there are kind of two things, I think, for me that are, a top scores. I loved all the James Bond uh, stuff, 
and also Barry Gray's stuff, they've they've both got this larger than life sort of incredibly expressive sound to them. So of course you're you're taken in almost immediately um, when you're watching it because it again it's it's cinematic vibes. It's not there's it it feels and sounds big budget and the action you know it, it throws you in. They're almost music sequences a lot. You know when you've got like mm. the launch sequences, the music is an integral part of that. And you you hum along to the the music and the themes that you're hearing. You know it's the same when when the hood would appear. I remember the exact type of um, the way the instruments go on that one, the woodwinds that they use. And I still you know before getting involved with the with um with the Anderson stuff like Captain Scarlet for Big Finish, um I was channeling those that that the hood thing. I channeled that into things before because I remembered that the the feeling of like you know it it. it it set that scene perfectly. So I loved it. I absolutely loved it. You know, I, I, I feel very inspired by any, anybody that does something incredibly well. And Barry Gray just excels in, in how, how he emotes with, with his strings, especially. Yeah. Yeah. I, the, um, I, I sometimes try to imagine a show like Thunderbirds or Stingray or any of them really with music from a different composer. Uh, I don't know if it would work. No, it, it, it's sort of the, the, the music in the Supermarination shows especially is it's almost like a character in its own right that's present throughout in a kind of reassuring way. Uh, and then I always think Barry's kind of use of location cues and character, either melodies or styles or a, even sort of um, uh, arrangements that are particular to, to vehicles or or to characters or whatever that it, they're they're so powerful you you can close your eyes and know what's happening definitely if you've, if you've only seen it once and that's just the, just on the music and again he doesn't <clears throat> he he doesn't compose for puppets he doesn't sit there and do little music mm. for little things he does big music for things which look big on the screen yeah. and and that makes a huge difference because you take it seriously when you're listening to it and you're right you know it is its own character in its own right and it's it's so when it's happy, it's really happy and and kind of jolly and you know you've got these wonderfully fast paced sort of strings and little you know brassy bits going on. But when it's danger and there's action, it's so serious and it's so big, go bam 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 bam, uh, that <laughs> it, it commands your attention. And, and yeah, you can close your eyes and if you hear those big cues, you would open your eyes because you're thinking, what is happening? <laughs> My God, something's go something's going down, you know. Yeah, I'm totally, totally with you. Um, and do you, would you would you say that that kind of hearing music like that has, has had kind of an influence in getting you to where you are today, Benji? And I don't mean just, you know, doing the stuff for Captain Scarlet, which we'll come on to shortly, but, you know, you, you've, you've gone into... Uh, uh, a very specific niche area of composition, really, with the, with the amount of work you do for Big Finish, and it fits with your, you know, retro nostalgian um, credentials. Well, it's certainly. <laughs> do you does, know, does Barry Gray stuff come into play for you? It's certainly one of those things that I I never would have, you know, I I always say I, I kind of fell into what I do through the love of everything else, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um. Certainly with Barry Gray's music, it made a huge impact on me growing up. Because it's part, it, whether you know, whether whether you you like it or not, it's part of who you are. Because you you'd watch it as a kid, and you and it becomes a part of you. You'll hear things, and your your thoughts will be triggered by certain things that sound similar with his stuff. You know, I was I I love his compositions. I love the way he manages to do what he does. The expressive nature of his his compositions, and so. Yeah, I, I took that with me and like to sometimes channel it in there. But mostly it's just lovely to listen to. It's nice to listen mm. to it. And you think, wow, how how is he how does he do that? Because actually he's incredibly complex with what he does. His changes and his fast changes. And it's something really you can only do with a real orchestra. So yeah. it's a lot harder with MIDI, as they call it, which is like artificial orchestral or sampled instruments. You can't actually no matter how hard you try, you'll never get it to sound quite as good because yeah. it's not real people and it doesn't have a mind like Barry's behind it to be able to quickly write, you know, work it all out. Yeah. Yeah, there's some there's some lovely recordings actually on uh, YouTube if you look them up, uh, Benji, or listeners, 
uh, of Barry doing some various takes of uh, cues from UFO. No way. And him stopping the orchestra and the little little voice coming in and uh, and saying, um, uh, no, 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 uh, that was a bit slow, actually. Um, <laughs> if we, uh, if the, if the horns could come in slightly uh, earlier and uh, and keep the pace up. Uh, and uh, and then he goes into it. And, and it's really amazing that this kind of quite sort of meek and quiet and sort of almost mousy sounding man is commanding this giant orchestra and producing this this epic sound. It's weirdly fitting. Uh, that That's his voice, is, isn't it? His voice is, yeah. is 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 the big sound. He doesn't need to speak yeah. up because he's got he's got a whole trombone <laughs> section that do it for him. Exactly. <laughs> but this kind of small character writes big music for small characters is really the kind of image that's in my head. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it, it's it's very fitting. And, you know, he takes it seriously in a different way as well in, in that writing for television. Um, you know, you get you hear some stuff, certainly from uh, that era, where people are very quickly, oh, yes, I did this job, and they knock out something, and it's good, but mm. it's no, nothing nothing sensational. But you get, you get the feeling with what he does that he actually cares about, A, the concept, and B, um, his own reputation because he 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 you know everything's a little bit different you know it's a Barry Gray score but he does channel in different elements almost everything mm. that he does has some uh central theme to it that yep. reflects throughout uh whether it's you know Captain Scarlet or, or uh UFO Space 1999 they've all got their own little things that work with it yeah so yeah definitely inspired by the man what a guy what a very guy. inspirational guy uh, now, do, do your, does your appreciation of Anderson stuff go beyond uh, that kind of uh, 1960 to 1975, six era ending the space 1999? Does it does it extend to, dare I say it, Terror Hawks uh, or Space Precinct or New Captain Scarlet, Benji? Or are you firmly trapped in the 60s and 70s? I think I, I think in some respects, I, I, I'm always sad that I never watched Terror Hawks when it was on the first time round. I know, I know. It's it's Jamie just pulled a very uh, disappointed face. <laughs> I did, um, I did. Um, and uh, yeah, I was very sad that I didn't get round to that one. So I, I came to Terror Hawks um, through Big Finish actually because we were doing yeah. uh, the the Terror Hawks audios and stuff. And so it was very much a case of um, my good friend uh, Joe Smith, who worked in the office at the time, so you, you must get on this. You'd really like it. And he was like, and and if you're not convinced, they've got the original music in there. Uh, that you'll you'll love, and so I, I went and had a listen, and I thought, wow, this is great, you know, and and, and so it's, I've since uh, been sucked into that, and think it is great fun, but yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of my you know a lot of my uh, my Super Marionation stuff, the stuff I suppose I grew up watching, really, I'm yeah. playing catch up on everything else. <laughs> I've seen you. There's I've, so much to see. There's so much to see. There is a lot. You know, I'd love to get into the really early stuff as well and see some of oh. that. Torchy, no, not that. Torchy uh, is, is interesting, though. It's, it's... Uh, I'm not so sure. Supercar and Fireball are very cute, and there's some nice music stuff. And actually hearing Barry's progress as a professional, I mean, already amazing in Supercar, but kind of coming up through Fireball. And I think he I think he hit his stride in Stingray. Stingray is, is brilliant, music yeah. hit his stride ahead of the puppetry, which was kind of one show delayed. But uh, yeah, amazing, amazing stuff. And I'm glad you like Richard Harvey's music too. Uh, Definitely, that, yeah. It's very, very different all, with all the synthy craziness and the JP8 and all that stuff that he was using. Um, That's dedication, doing proper proper 80s synths as well and really going for it, you know. Yeah, uh, crazy stuff they were setting up. He showed me pictures of some of their stuff with all the different cables connecting endless banks of... I don't even know what they are, for, but, but for the synth sound, just, just crazy stuff. Um, so... On the big finish note, Benji, you uh, how, how did this happen? So we we decided with big finish to do some Captain Scarlet stuff for the 50th anniversary two years ago, uh, and that was a a load of kind of um, uh, mini album stories plus adapted from TV stories with linking material by Ed Bishop and some documentary material. But also we did three Spectrum files, and they were books by John Thaden written in the late 60s. Um, they were kind of expanding the world of Scarlet, and we we turn them into, uh, what do we call them, enhanced audio books with right, multiple yeah. readers and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, how, how did this happen? Did, did, did Nick Briggs suggest that you would be the, the one with the right level of, of retro uh, music appreciation to do this? 
I think he, he emailed you, didn't he? And I got I got an email from you out out of the blue saying, "Oh, mm. um, Nick put me in touch. Um, I think you know this might be something that's interesting." I think you sent me some links to some fun sound effectsy bits as mm. well, um, and we got talking after there. And of course, you know, you when you see uh, when you see names like Captain Scarlet on a bit of paper, you don't really say no, do you? You you look at it, you think, right, you know, I'm I'm always uh, I'm always the type of person that I'll always give everything a good go. Um, but that said, you know, filling in, in Barry's shoes is a terrifying thing to do, especially mm. especially when you haven't got an orchestra. You're actually sat with a computer in one room and a, uh, with a keyboard. So I was I was quite scared to do it. And um, it, we didn't have a lot of time, did we, as well? Time was very short. <laughs> as is often the way with these, time was short, yes. Um, and I think I should just put an explainer in here that... Um, Quite often people, when they see new things or hear releases are happening or whatever, that they're, in their mind, they're like, well, why can't they use the original music, the original recorded stuff? Yeah. And I just say it's ridiculously expensive and incredibly complex. So, for example, if we wanted to use some original music cues from Captain Scarlet as used in the show, we'd have to pay uh, to access and to use those original recordings which are often owned by multiple parties depending on their usage rights plus pay uh, residuals to the composer um, and, and it, it ends up being being so expensive it's prohibitive so we had we had no opportunity but we were very lucky that you uh, were able to jump in and and channel Barry Gray from beyond the grave <laughs> <laughs> oh, well that's that's the best compliment I could possibly hear it was it was hard as well because you don't want to you don't want to do a carbon copy of anything so what I tried to do mm. was kind of give it the essence of that classic sound but also maybe add in a few elements which are slightly more modern to fit the context of people listening now um I did go there was some really there are some elements of it I took far too seriously though <laughs> um, in that I, uh, I a lot of it I I bought a um, a reel to reel tape simulator, so that all of the the sounds coming that that ended up on the CDs, mm. um, it all went through this this thing of where it simulated the tape and it and it outputted it in mono, so it's not in not out of each speaker, just one speaker at the same time, uh, and so everything sounds that little bit overdriven and slightly. Mm -hmm distorted a little bit but enough like like so you can imagine it's it's been recorded on microphones in a studio and the tapes have been left over and that's what we've got and i thought that would be a nice thing to just add that extra level of like authenticity to it so you yeah. think well this is the show the same show that that i was watching in the 60s yeah that's the and thoughts behind it it, it it really worked. You you know you came up with some brand new cues that were not related at all to the original show. Uh, you came up with cues that were really evocative of the original um, and stuff that was kind of in between. Uh, and really, I mean, bearing in mind that the only kind of authentic element that we were putting in from the original series was Liz Morgan doing the uh, the female voices in the audio books. Uh, you know, between uh, David Graham narrating uh, your music. Um, fantastic sound designers, your music, and Wayne Forrester doing seventy-five thousand male voices in the thing. Um, I think we turned out something which was relatively authentic. Really, we pulled it off. It's certainly, it certainly, it's one of those things you can listen to it, and I don't, I don't think you would, you wouldn't think this is something completely different. You would still relate it back to that. Mm. I think the hardest thing was just doing, um, was having like action sequences that lasted about ten minutes because of <laughs> because of the way that it's 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 in an enhanced audio book. So you it's can't just do weird, like yeah. a da 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 da. You kind of had to be like da da da. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Keep it going. You know. You don't. You don't want to go all out and then have like four minutes of just just padding. It kind of had to all flow <laughs> and be interesting. Yeah. That was quite yeah. fun, yeah. No, there was there was no padding in there. It's great. So if if you haven't heard them, listeners, uh, go and give at least one a try. There's there's three of them. They're uh, yeah, they're authentic slices of '60s Captain Scarlet brought to life by uh, a marvelous team. We also worked on that Captain Scarlet project to fix the speed error <laughs> on Captain Scarlet versus Captain Black from the original mini albums. Can you remember enough to just briefly cover? What had happened to that original version, we think, and and what we did to correct it. 
So they had a, um, with the original recordings, uh, these were the, am I right in thinking that they were direct to um, LP uh, records? And so what they've done is when they were actually either recording it or bouncing it down, they slowed it down towards the end so that, I think it's so that it would fill out more space on, it was either (laughs) it was either that it would fill out more space or it was that the slack on the tapes that, that as it was going well, it was sort of losing the tension, which was then forcing yeah. it to get slower. It was something weird like that. But apparently it had been a problem that that had just people had just put up with for years, hadn't they? And so, um, you know, I was sort of determined to get to the bottom of it, really. So, um, and this is weird, I rented uh, a bit of software. I, I never thought I'd ever rent software, but apparently it's something that they use for... Um, for movies and Hollywood and stuff. Uh, uh, they've used it in things like Singing in the Rain uh, for like the remasters and stuff. Yeah. And what it is, is it simulates um, the original film reels in a way that you can kind of uh, speed up and slow things down. So what I did was I, I kind of used that in the context of audio to wind it back up ag- again. And it wasn't perfect because I remember we sat down uh, in an office together, didn't we? And for we had to, hours. we had to, for a long time, we had to do little bits to cheat it all up and and get it just just right, really. And a lot of it was by ear. Mm. Um, but we, I think we managed that really well. I think the strangest thing out of all of it was for one of the others, and um, the ending, the quality at the end of the uh, recording was or, or that we had was terrible. And um, I was just sitting there thinking, "There's nothing I can do to make this better. It just is. It's just chewed up." And it was on. It was on the same day I was working on it that I I uh, popped into town for a, a quick drink with some friends. And on the way there, we popped into the record shop. And I always like to see the soundtracks. And in there was a. Um, I've got it over there actually in my pile of record. I just pointed to some records. Um, <laughs> it was a double whammy of uh, Thunderbirds on one side and Captain Scarlet on the other side. Mm. And I saw it. I thought, oh, this is this is very novel, isn't it? I'm working one of these. And I realised it was the same episode that i was working on so i so i bought it it didn't cost a lot i don't think um i bought it took it back and i played it and the end was completely intact and sounded really good (laughs) so in the end i just i just cheated and and used the end of that record on the on the thing that went out and so it's sort of yeah weird coincidences like that tend to happen to me things just work (laughs) things just tend to work out you know And, and that was a weird one where it worked perfectly yeah well, they ended up sounding great. I think the best, best those mini albums have ever sounded. Oh, so if- well, that's the main thing. As long as, as you yeah. know, it's the end of the day. It's I know there are people that absolutely love that sort of stuff. So it's important to to get it right and try and get rid of as many little quirks that have happened as possible. Really. Yeah. Well, I think we did a great job, and uh, and yeah, it's a lovely, lovely presentation set, isn't it? That gorgeous. Uh, yeah. Piece. If you've not, if I don't know if any are still ar- available, but if you've not got one. It's well worth getting because they're they're just lovely to hold and look at. Some gorgeous artwork in there as well, yeah. and you get oh, lo- and, and lovely words by the the, the podcast's own randomizer general Chris Dale. <laughs> well, there we go. You see, yes, you're right as well. But it's, the whole thing's beautifully compiled, isn't it? As well, yeah. You know, with lots of gorgeous diagrams, and you also get uh, there's some fun sort of unheard cues in there as well, aren't there? Of bits of music yes. and adverts and all sorts. It's really, really good stuff. So I highly it, recommend it. It is a that. fun set. It is a fun set. And and that wasn't the only result of our working together, Benji, because also we've ended up doing some other bits and pieces together, haven't we? I think you did the full dialogue cut and sync on the Firestorm mini sode. Is that right? That's right. Yep, that was me. Yep. There you go. So thanks to Benji, uh, all that came together and uh, and sounded lovely and uh, and fitted the edit and the lip sync really nicely. Uh, and then since then, we've done some other bits and pieces which we can't talk about, which are probably related to the same thing we just talked about, but we can't say anything, can we? It's true. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're... But they've been fun. Oh, it's so fun! You know, it's, it's, there's been <laughs> so hard to say something without saying anything. Um, is you know, I'm so grateful for being able to work on these great things like that, and they they bring with them their own sets of challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, but but at the same time, you know, I never I never would have thought that I'd be syncing dial up dialogue up uh, to puppets. I never thought I'd be doing that. Um, and so accepting that job was like, a, well, right? Can I even do this? Um, <laughs> But it's just great fun, you know. It's not bo- It's never boring. It's it's always really fun and interesting, and you know, I I'm in awe when when I see the final product and it's it's just every everything comes together and it's just it's mind blowing. It really is. It's just exceptionally great. 
it's one of those great pleasures of working in the creative stuff when you're everyone's doing different stuff and then you see it all come together. It's just a lovely, a lovely big feeling. Team it? effort, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Everybody's everybody does what their own little bit, and yeah, it comes out. And you think, oh, worth every second. Yeah, uh, and now we we are also working on another thing we can't talk about right now, which is uh, so frustrating. And I'm sorry, listeners, but you know this is a nice sort of thing where you'll be able to to listen back or you'll think when you hear the announcement, oh, that's what they were talking about. Great, um, but uh, hopefully very soon, I guess in the next couple of months, uh, you'll you'll hear about another thing that Benji's doing great work on and is using all of his kind of retro uh, fascination and and talents. Uh, to put together so I'm, I'm looking forward in fact I heard a quick blast of what yeah. they're doing just now uh, and uh, yeah I think I think you'll be well chuffed uh, Anderson fans oh well you know I, I, I thought I'd surprise Jamie as soon as we started this interview I was like listen to this before we'd even done any of this listen to this I'm just doing this now yeah it's I'm so excited I can't wait for everybody to find out because it's sort of it's it's I would say it's quite big news uh and yeah yeah, it really is. And so I'm just thrilled to be working on it. It's it's going to be a challenge and is a challenge, but it's a fun challenge. And they're the best kinds of challenges. <laughs> this has been a motivational life. talk by Benji. It's a fun <laughs> challenge, but all challenges are fun. Yeah. It's been a motivational talk and a sales pitch for Big, Big Finish's Captain <laughs> Scarlet. Quite, of Benji yeah. <laughs> uh, now, Benji, just, just to wrap us up, you've kind of, we've kind of touched on the summary points of why you liked the Anderson shows and you know Barry Gray's music is obviously a massive part of that. Um, but I'm interested, especially from your perspective of, of coming to the whole thing from toys and then uh, you know finding the series later on and and watching it in the '90s and 2000s. What for you, in summary, do you think kind of drew you to it and keeps you connected to those shows? Because there's lots of stuff we watch as kids that we throw away, we kind of forget about. Um, but this has clearly stuck with you to some degree. So why do you think that is? I suppose I could answer that in, in two kind of different sections. The reason I come back to it is because um, no matter how many times you watch it, A, you're, you, never, you're, you never look at it and think, oh, it's not as good as I remember. It always exceeds <laughs> your expectations. Yeah. And you find yourself as well, watching it from a kid, moving on to it as an adult. You know, I'd, I'd not watched uh, Thunderbirds, for example, um, since you know it was it was uh, on the telly in two thousands, I bought the Blu Ray set mm. and sat and watched it and was just in awe of the detail and yeah. just how you know, how brilliant everybody is at their craft. Really, there are just mm. so many elements, and so I think the reason I come back to it is because I can watch the same things again and again and continuously be baffled and stunned by how gloriously wonderful it is. Um, and the reason I think I got into it as a kid is because it's it's uh, there's nothing quite else like it really. It's its own genre, and it's it's like it's really it's it's like all the best bits out of an action and adventure film, isn't it? Really squeezed into a TV show, which looks completely different, sounds completely different, yeah, and also sells damn good toys in the process, really. So <laughs> as a kid, what more are you going to love? You know. That is very true. Yeah, no, I think so, you're right. Every every person in every department, went above and beyond, whether or not their the level of detail or work they were putting in would ever be seen or truly appreciated, they couldn't have known that we were going to be watching Blu-rays all these years later, and yet they went to that crazy level of detail um, uh, and you know quality levels of performance and editing. Every, every part it went way beyond what it needed to be for a kids show, and I'm, I think you're you're right. That's part of the continuing timeless magic of it and it's one of those things as well it's like you know um i come from a, a background of doctor who and there there are things that, which are like with doctor who the thing that always gets on my nerves is when people say things like oh um the wobbly sets are so frustrating i we used to laugh at them all the time i was like well there weren't that many wobbly sets in fact, mm. in fact you can count the amount of times you see a set wobble i think on on one hand yeah. And it's the same, you know, when with the super marination stuff, people say things like, oh, yes, we used to be able to see the strings and all this sort of stuff. And again, you know, it's people spend all their time saying things like that. But when you actually look, the strings, A, you, you know, you don't, you hardly notice them. But B, that's the least mm. of your concerns when you've just got so many incredible things to be looking at. Exactly. There's exactly. just, it's, it, it's another, it's a whole other world and it does itself, you know, and it works perfectly, in my opinion. 
What a lovely summary, Benji. Thank you very much. Uh, if people who have listened to you talk on this podcast want to find you on social media, where can they do that? So you can find me on Twitter at uh, at Labonj, L-A-B-O-N-J. Um, but as well as that, um, as Jamie knows all too well, um, myself and uh, Nicholas Briggs, uh, uh, who is the voice of the Daleks, as, and also Remus in Firestorm, oh, um, we have our own uh, podcast called The Benji Nick Show. So you can find us on um, on Twitter. I think it's at Benji and Nick. So give that one a whirl as well. Nice. Jamie Good features plug. on it, don't you? Jamie features on it uh, pretty much every week. We phone him up for no real reason other than to pester him and ask him silly questions, really. Yeah, if there are silly questions from you normally. But uh, yes, in fact, my contribution. Will know that. <laughs> Thank you, Benji. Uh, because two weeks ago, or three weeks ago on the podcast, uh, when I was interviewing John Culshaw, you rang yes. during the interview, which then made it in a really weirdly meta way into our podcast. <laughs> And back into yours again, I think. So it's all very odd, the whole Podcast thing. Podcast leakage. It's all yeah, very, very, it's all odd, very wibbly it? wobbly. Anyway, Benji, thank you for, thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. And uh, obviously, if, if you want, to, if you you listeners want to hear more of Benji's work, then just go and buy. You know, any five big Finnish releases, and chances are one or two of them will have his music. <laughs> Is that about right? I think. Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Cheers, Benji. And, uh, yeah, cheers. Ta-ra. Bye-bye. Isn't Benji a nice chap as well? Yeah, yeah. As well it. as being talented and smart. And I know. Very thoughtful about all the music stuff. Yes. Big fan of Barry Gray, of course. I mean, who isn't? I was going to say, Richard. Yes. Who is it? In fact, listeners, if you're out there and you're not a fan of Barry Gray's <laughs> music, let us know and why. I'd be really, really interested. Yeah, I cannot okay. believe there's anyone who thinks... I yeah, would really you know like what? Thunderbirds if only it wasn't for the music. <laughs> that's right. I bet you there must be somebody out there, though, but I doubt yeah. they listen to this podcast. No, that's true. That's true. Oh, that's, yeah, that's anyway, let us know. Yeah. Now, I've uh, yet to meet Benji, of course. Really? Um, Even yeah. though he says your name every week. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's odd, isn't it? Yeah, that's very strange. But we should make that happen, certainly, shouldn't we? we can have yeah. A bit of, a bit I think he, he'd be a good Fab Live guest, actually. Ah, OK. Great. Yeah. So, okay. Benji, if you're listening back to this, yeah. then do come along on Fab Live at some point. We'd love to have you on. Yeah. Perhaps Great. he could perhaps he could bring uh, bring one of his keyboards along and uh, do us some some oh, live music. Oh, nice! Some Pressure's live. on, Benji. That's lovely. Yeah, give us a live bed for the Jerry Anderson yeah, news or something. Yeah, would be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, future interviewees. Uh, well, I mean, I, I think I could say this because uh, I bumped into someone who lives in my village the other day, and I know he's lived in the village for quite a while, but I've never really kind of had the occasion to uh, to talk to him. Ross Kemp. It's only Ross Kemp who played uh, Grant Mitchell, I think, in EastEnders. Fantastic. Lives in Cookham. Anyway, I saw him popping out of the chemist. I didn't ask why, uh, and uh, but I did take the opportunity to accost him and say, uh, "Excuse me, I know this is a strange question, but uh, have you got any thoughts on Jerry Anderson at all?" And he, his eyes lit up, uh, and he really? started waxing lyrical about Thunderbirds and about puppetry and model work oh, and how TV has changed so much over the years and how kids are missing out. And I said, right, well, do you want to hold that thought and maybe we'll get together at some point and uh, get a microphone and uh, maybe record a, 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 some little interview for the podcast? And he was absolutely up for it. However, Amazing. he said, I've just spent the week in Broadmoor. <laughs> oh, yeah. naughty boy. I know. And he was flying off to uh, Ukraine, I think, to uh, spend some time with some, uh, you know, I don't know, undercover terrorists or guerrillas or something. Uh, right. he, he lives that kind of a life now. He does, yes. Yeah. So uh, I've dropped an email to his publicist and hopefully schedule allowing, we'll have Ross Kemp joining us. Brilliant. That's very exciting, Richard. Nice find there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's always worth asking, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, yeah. uh, and that, uh, yeah, a, a great variety of guests from Benji Clifford to Ross Kemp uh, and from uh, Ross Kemp to Samira Ahmed. Yeah. Oh, right. Yes. So uh, hopefully uh, next month or in August, I shall be recording a, 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 um, an interview with Samira Ahmed and Kevin great. Fong. Right. Uh, who do a lot of Radio 4 and science -y stuff together. Nice. Samira is a massive Space 1999 fan, as is Kevin. And as we're coming up to uh, Breakaway Day 2019, yes, the we are. fictional 20th anniversary of the moon fictionally blowing out of Earth's orbit due to a fictional <laughs> nuclear disaster, uh, why not have a chat with those two? Because they've got a really interesting set of perspectives on it. So Yeah, um, great. Those and many more... 
yeah. on the way. Exactly. Uh, now, in the meantime, Rob Doyle got in touch on our Facebook group. I have to read this out. Very often people say, oh, can you mention my birthday and so on? It's next week or next month. Uh, it's quite difficult to keep track of all these things. <laughs> Very often I forget. <laughs> it's my fault entirely. But anyway, Rob says, hi, Richard and Jamie. Now, he asked us last pod, I think, or maybe the pod before, he just uh, got Terror Hawks on DVD and wondered yes. which he should start uh, watching with his nine-year-old. I remember when we gave recommendations, didn't we? Exactly. Hey, so he says, hi, Richard and Jamie. Brackets, I'll change the order next time, to be fair. Thanks for another great podcast and the shout out. We did start Terror Hawks from the beginning and my son Ewan loves it. We're going to watch it every Sunday morning while mum has a lie in. That's nice, Aww. isn't it? Yeah, perfect. Perfect dad time. Not Could brilliant. I be cheeky and ask you to give you an, a shout out on one of the upcoming podcasts as it would be a lovely surprise for him? So there you go. There's one shout out I have actually remembered. So hello, Ewan. Hope you're enjoying uh, Terror Hawks and lovely to have you as a listener. There yeah, 1010, Ewan. It, perfect. Why didn't I think of that? Because you're not a Terror Hawks um, nerd like I am. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So there we are. Great. Just thought I'd drop that in there while I remembered. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, I just love that sort of thing where, you know... I know. I know kids today, yeah. introduced to a show from the 80s. Yeah, and, Sunday uh, morning treat with just the dad. Brilliant. Yeah, love it's that. really nice. Yeah, yes, yeah, so, listeners, if you've got uh, kids, nieces, nephews, grandkids, whatever, um, and you fancy introducing them to a Jerry Anderson show, let us know how you got on. We'd mm. love to hear more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a nice way to introduce people to Jerry Anderson shows, though, Richard. Uh, yes. Is via... Something that we like to call the randomizer. I don't well, know if you're aware of it. Well, we like to call it that because that's very much what it's called. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Anyway, the randomizer is Chris Dale's way of taking us through six decades of Jerry Anderson shows, picking a random episode each week where he sort of, you know, talks us through it and gives us his thoughts and comments. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think he was hoping for a bit of a, um, a gentle week this week. He's still recovering from Torchy. I bet he is. So, shall we wake him up? Yeah. Come on, Chris. 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 Wake up. <sighs> oh, this is nice. No emergencies, no disasters, no nothing. Uh, just me and my bed. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? This is your life. What? 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 This is your life. Uh... Uh, right, sorry, um, do, do, do you mean to tell me that you've been laying next to me all night? Yes, I do. Okay, uh, this is your life, eh? Oh, I see! Is this one of those things where we discuss stuff I've done before and play a load of old clips, thus saving me from having to do any actual work this week? Because let me tell you, I am all over not having to do any work. Um, take for instance the time I had to save Marina from the Guardian of Piri. Phew, that sure was a tough one. Are you afraid of me? No, no, no. I... I just want to know what you've done to Marina. That is the will of the Guardian. Her nerves are relaxed. Her appetites are assuaged. The struggle is over. And you can join her in paradise. Ah, that. Uh, well, thanks, but no thanks. Uh, if you'll just release Marina, we'll be on our way. Thanks. That was just great. I haven't finished yet. Oh, uh, and of course, we mustn't forget who runs the whole show. <laughs> well, of course. I mean, <laughs> definitely not. Marina, the beautiful girl from under the sea. What? Marina, beautiful girl from under the sea. This is your life. Oh, oh, it's it's Marina's. This is your life, is it? Oh, uh, well then, I'll 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 just be over here. Um, uh, I'll I'll press the button on the randomizer, shall I? Glad to be of service in even a small way. It's 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 no problem. Marina, uh, tell us, uh, what do you consider to be your well, most difficult experience to date? You're not going to get an answer. She can't speak. Uh, is it true that there's a romance between you? And oh, this should be good. Oh, and so should today's selection from The Randomizer. It's an episode I've never seen before, but one I've heard quite a bit about. Here's Lavender Castle with dueling banjos. Well, that sure was a great adventure. Oh, get out of my bed. Honestly, you're as bad as Torchy and Bumbledrop. Lavender Castle, a place of legend, fabled right across the universe. This is our quest, to find it. So, this is our third go with Lavender Castle now. This is, uh, they've all been this year so far, Lavender Castle, which is, uh, 
quite strange, but this is one of the few series that uh, I, I, as I said previously, I basically have no knowledge of. And someone brought up the topic recently on the podca- uh, podcast listeners' Facebook page of what are your sort of um, blank areas within the Anderson canon? What don't you have much experience of? It For me, it's this and uh, certain um, later episodes of, of Torchy, I'm, which, you know... For obvious reasons, I'm not going to look at Torchy. Uh, but, yeah, so far I've really enjoyed what I've seen of Lavender Castle. And I've been particularly looking forward to this episode, Dueling Banjos, because it was one that um, Crispin Merrill, who composed the music for the series and Space Precinct to New Captain Scarlet, was very, uh, spoke very highly of when I interviewed him back in, uh, was it pod 25, 26-ish? Put the fuel cap back on the reserve tank. Put a lot of work into this episode. He's very proud of it. So uh, yeah, I've been wanting to see this one for a while. Very happy to see it pop up on the old randomizer. Planet Quagmire, and we're being pulled towards it. We'll have to crash land in the Quagmire swamp. Oh, so the lavender, uh, the um, paradox crew. They just, you know, they decide they're going to crash land. They don't care. I mean, if, if it's Alpha, it's like, oh no, we're going to crash land, even though we do it every week. Somehow this is a big deal, but for the paradox crew, it's just like, nah, we're down. What's happened? Oh, I've you crash landed. Are they broken? Oh, no. And I've got to say, the, um, the, the sort of CGI on that crash landing and actually the shot of the ship itself You've looks a bit. Um, the question is, naff. Like oh, poor old Light has been just to get the swamp? dragged out of shot by um, Sproggle. <gasps> and here he is. The dank. The banjo playing dank that I've heard so much about. The dank! The dank! Yeah, the dank looks like a sort of Over here. praying mantis. What in tarnation are you boys up to? <laughs> We've run out of fuel and we oh. Yeah, he looks like a sort of praying mantis with uh, We need your help. Yes, sure three arms, do. purple trousers. I uh, ain't getting it. And a banjo. I figure you're just another bunch of no good varmints after my dank juice. Dank juice. Oh, what's this? Anyway, is that, that, is that a Parker pen refill? That looks like an old uh, ink cartridge. Hmm. <laughs> and I'm a dead shirt to win again. No, don't go. I bet. I could beat you. Excuse me. Oh. You reckon you can play the banjo better than me? Certainly. And I'm um, challenging Why are we into a banjo contest, contest, incidentally? Have I waffled over that? You help us out of our little predicament. And if I win... This spaceship is yours. Oh. oh. I like how he, uh, he doesn't consult the crew at all on this. It's just like, yeah, it's all your futures, don't worry. I've got this under control. Let's say we start in a couple of hours. Mm. I never knew you could play the banjo, Captain. Yes, in my youth, but I haven't played for years. Yes, and I think that now's the time to put in a little practice. Oh, didn't worry, Captain. I'm a chump myself on the bagpipes, that is. Oh. I'll help you get those fingers flying again. Has there ever been a, a Scottish character in a Jerry Anderson series who was not expert with the bagpipes? Um, yeah, right the way through to New Captain Scarlet, Captain Grey was Scottish in that, and he played the bagpipes. Oh dear. But Crispin was telling me in his interview that um, he actually... Oh gosh, there's the bagpipes. Um, he actually sent over his sheet music to the animators so that they could match the the, the movement of Thrice's fingers as close as possible to the actual the actual tune which I think is great it, it's hey, Captain, another Captain, element of, um, of, of they put so much hard work and effort I'd into this show you're cruising for bruising Captain I'm going to play so hot the reading on this your banjometer is going to fly clean <laughs> off the top banjometer oh and Thrice has just sat there like yeah um right so the banjometer is sort of but seeing as I'm a gentleman um, it's a thermometer with a balloon attached that listens in to the, the banjo playing and the balloon inflates as it um, responds to the better banjo player. 
This is nuts. Well, this is doing quite well, though. And it's such a such good animation on those those fingers of Captain Thrice is there. Let me show you how it's really done. It really helps to convince that these because they don't need to they didn't need to go the extra mile and specifically match the finger movements to the the music. Oh, the Danks. <laughs> Sproggle's playing an invisible banjo. The Dank is waving his own banjo over his head. <laughs> now that's what you call picking. Come on, Captain, you can do it. Maybe he isn't bad, but my fingers are aching already. Don't yeah. give up, Captain, you're yeah, doing great. Fingers. Oh, very well. And you can see the, the veins on that hand as well. These are some beautiful puppets, although Cosgrove Hall stuff was... Or was it, no, it wasn't Cosgrove Hall, was it? It was, um, um... Or was it? I'm confused. I've got myself into a... Looks like someone's been it certainly looks very Cosgrove Hall. Because I'll have to pull a few tricks out the bag. Good grief! Oh, it was McKinnon and Saunders who... Oh, my goodness. The Dank has now got two banjos. Sproggle and Squeakle are up. What is happening? <laughs> What is happening? This is brilliant. I love this. It's nuts, but it's brilliant. Um, yeah, McKinnon and Saunders built puppets for, for Lavender Castle. It was, it was Cosgrove Hall who, who animated them. Um, uh, Captain, I'd say it's time for Plan B. I don't know, Isambard. It, it's a long shot. You can do it, Captain. Oh, now he's got... All right, so they actually have... Oh, they've got Crispin's actual sheet music okay. there. In puppet Mr. form. Dank, you want a oh. banjo duel? You've got it. Oh yeah, here we go. I'm, I'm assuming from the way they're, they're talking to the Dank that he he had appeared in a previous episode. Uh, otherwise, it is very strange that they've just crashed on a planet and have immediately started a, a banjo contest with somebody they've never met before. Oh my goodness, the animation is just so... These fingers are just a blur. And and the Dank's face, there's so much expression on his face. His, his mouth just dropped open then. And the balloon has burst and destroyed the banjometer. Hey, you did it! Well done, Captain! Aww. He beat you fair and square, Cobber. Now you got to help us get out of here. He blew up the banjometer. The banjometer is unblowable. Hey, don't come the raw <laughs> prawn with me, mate. A promise is a promise. He never, he never made a promise. Yeah. You. Oh. That guy. Poor old Dank. Kangaroo dunk. loose in the top paddock. <gasps> What's that? Dank juice. Dank juice. The... With my compliments, Captain. But we don't need a drink. We need fuel. Dank juice ain't just any old drink, Captain. Put it in your fuel tank. It'll do the trick, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a try, Captain. <laughs> I mean, yeah, considering that um, Captain Thrice is always drunk on... Um... Oh, what is that stuffy drink? Somebody did tell me and I forgot. Splash of swamp juice in the face for the dank. And again, that CGI of the I've been drinking that stuff. The paradox taking off was not the the greatest, but the oh, the the beautiful character models more than made up for it. So that was dueling banjos, and oh, that was lovely. Uh, again, I'm, I've I've been so remiss in not looking at Lavender Castle, even though it's it's just ten minutes long. There's so much charm and and effort has gone into that little mad little story and um, some fa fantastic work on the musical front of course with this one um, uh, Paul Bishop was the man on the banjo for this one, uh, did some wonderful stuff um, yeah I've been looking forward to seeing that come up on the randomizer for a while now and it definitely did not disappoint Ah, I am very fond of that episode right yes, it's very sweet yeah, and, uh, great music and something that Crispin Morel just poured everything into yeah it is lovely uh, isn't it 
Yeah. And Lavender Castle is just such a sweet series. Lavender Castle is one of those overlooked Jerry Anderson series, isn't it? People come yeah. to it often with a look of surprise on their face that, that it's quite so sweet and wonderful. And obviously yeah. quite late in his career as well. I mean, we're talking yeah. 2000 and what? No, talking 1999 it was released. Oh, OK, just about. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. But still fairly late on. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Lovely Thanks, show. Go and check it out if you can. Yeah, Thank very you. good. Thank you, Chris. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, if you've been watching Lambda Castle or if, you would, if you've discovered a Jerry Anson show through the randomizer, we'd love to hear. Podcast at jerryanson.co.uk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe to us on whichever platform you're listening to us on and rate and review and share us with your friends. And uh, do listeners go and buy Richard's new book, <laughs> The Devil in the Dock. Thank you very much. I slightly <laughs> forgot what it was called. I was going to yeah, say that. I saw the look the, of panic in your the eyes. The Dicky in the Dock. Uh, the Devil in the Dock, uh, which is available on all good uh, online bookie book uh, yeah. platforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bookie yeah. book 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 platforms. That's right. Well uh, done. Yes, I'm sure Richard would appreciate your support, uh, and I would appreciate your support of Richard also. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Uh, that's it now. Yeah, all right then. Should we go? Mm, yeah, are you doing anything nice? Bit of writing. Perfect. Me too. All right, oh, great. Fine. Well, let, let's go write. Let's do that. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Bye. Stage one complete. Let's go. Have you not had breakfast? No. Haven't you? And now it's lunchtime, pretty I, much. Do you know what? Talking of food, I had a handful of walnuts before we started and a little bit got lodged at the back of my throat. Really? I thought I was going to be coughing throughout the whole of the last Heroically, hour. Heroically, you made it through with wedged e- walnut. Exactly. You see? That's what I do for this podcast. <laughs> Normally makes people wince that, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll leave that there, I think. Yeah, well, thanks for making it through. And uh, be careful with your uh, nut eating in future. I will... <coughs> There it is. Oh. <coughs> yeah, all right. All right. Bye, Richard. Bye. <laughs>